Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, pretty fascinating stuff. First up, there's a reason why Bitcoin dropped, and the reason is because there was a giant futures gap in the biggest drop since 20K. But in reality, it really doesn't matter, and I'm gonna show you exactly why. Part of the reason is supply and demand. And this article from Bitcoin.com talks about 78% of the circulating Bitcoin supply is e-liquid, meaning it doesn't move. Only 4.2 million Bitcoin is in constant circulation. And when you have a supply versus demand, where there's a lot of demand, price goes up. And to really drill down on that fact, Michael Saylor says he just bought 2.5 billion in Bitcoin through MicroStrategy and then other entities. If you know anything about Michael Saylor, he's not selling. So we'll take a look at all that, but let's just take a look at what's going on with the market. First up, it is January 4th. It is 6.48 a.m. Getting things done early because there's a lot of other things I got to do. So let's break in. So Bitcoin right now is down almost 10%. And we're going to take a look at that CME gap, which I think is just, that doesn't really matter. But it is up 18% for the week, so uh, we'll take it. Ethereum is almost hitting $1,000. And uh, yesterday I sent out a tweet right before I went to bed and I said, hey, if I wake up tomorrow to find a $1 trillion market cap, I won't be surprised. Cardano is going to pump hard. So I was half right. So when I went to bed last night, it was almost, it was about 900 billion. And of course I wake up today and it's uh, roughly, what, 856 billion. So uh, we'd actually been fluctuating. When I woke up at four in the morning, it was 800 billion. I was like, what the heck? We just lost a hundred billion dollars? But that's just how it is. And it goes to show you that if you think you know where things are going in cryptocurrency, it just comes down and just slaps you in the face and says, just grab some bench because I'm going to show you exactly what, what is so different. And of course, I just tweeted out. I said, yep, and there's a pullback. And every time you think you know where it's going, you really don't. So that is what it is. And it actually has, uh, you know, come back about $50 billion. So not too bad. Uh, we'll take a look at the dominance. Bitcoin is slipping a little bit. Uh, it was at almost 71%. Now we're at 67.5. ETH at 13.2 dominance. And uh, what that says to me, a little bit of an altcoin rally. So we'll see. Ethereum, uh, you know, we thought it might go to $1,200. Well, here we are at below 1000 But again, it doesn't really matter. Tether's Tether, nobody cares unless you're an auditor. XRP up 2.8%. Congratulations, XRP holders. 22, whopping 22 cents. Watch out. Litecoin down 2%. And uh, just yesterday or two days ago, I forgot when it was, XRP and Litecoin had flipped around. And you can see you got Litecoin at 10.2 billion, uh, XRP at 10.5. Polka dot at 8.8, .8. and uh, I I see a lot of flippings happening. I think Litecoin was going to replace XRP for a bit, and we'll, we'll see. Bitcoin Cash down a percent, but it's up 20 for the week. It can't be that. And Cardano making a pretty darn great run here, 38% in seven days, and 4% in 24 hours. So congratulations, Cardano holders pretty great i will say this i think cardano is on its way to a dollar to five dollars in this bull run and if you haven't already staked with us over at d news uh, we're almost at uh, 30 percent saturation so thanks everybody who has come in uh, i think we're gonna be saturated probably the next two or three weeks and then that'll be it we'll close if you're looking to stake with uh, our stake pool just look in the description below there's a link look just like this and uh, you can stake with us all right so what else we got anything good man uh, Bitcoin SV down a little bit. Nah, nobody cares. Celsius, I thought they were going to break to $7, but ah, just dropped a little bit. Hey, 42% for the week, not too bad. And Theta down 8%, still hovering around $2. I like those odds. So again, we're going to have dips and valleys. You have to understand. And uh, hopefully if you're not new to this, this is like normal everyday stuff. But if you are new, welcome. Uh, just know that this is what usually happens. We have massive run-ups and then, and then we take a little bit of a step back. Sometimes it's like, you know, three steps forward, one step back. Uh, and then, you know, two steps forward, then two steps back. It's kind of weird, but uh, that's just how it all works out. But I'm going to tell you why all these price action doesn't matter. And we're gonna see Bitcoin at 150K. We're gonna see Ethereum at around 10K. We're gonna see, like I said, Cardano from a dollar to five. And this bull run's gonna be massive in 2021. Just hold on, just watch. So first up, I wanna make this quick because it's really not a big thing. Um, Bitcoin price dove to uh, under, under 28,000 to fill a giant futures gap in the biggest drop since 20K. So what happened? Well, in the time that, that the market closes and the market opens, there's a huge price difference. And that huge price difference is Bitcoin. And this is the thing that it's hard to kind of wrap your head around, especially if you're in the traditional market. So you're like, what the heck? We just left here before Christmas and it was at, you know, 27, 28. Now we come back and it's like a 33. What the heck happened? 
Well, this is what happens. So when you have these gaps, you got to fill them. I and mean, most of the times they get filled, not all the time, most of the time. And then uh, all these different uh, pricing orders got filled and that's just how it is. So price dipped 4,000 in an hour, which in the traditional market is insane in our, in our market. We call that a Monday and that's just how it is. So there was a drop of 12% in one hour. I don't really care. And then the rest of it is just technical stuff. I really just don't really see the big deal. So I know people get all flipped out about it and they, they try to really break it down and really get to the minutia, which I just don't care so much. What is important is don't take your eye off the prize. And this is really what it is. Supply and demand. When you have a diminishing supply and people still want that, which is a high demand, the price will go up. And this is proof positive what's happening. And this is what everybody's been predicting, the stock to flow ratio. And here we are. So 78% of the circulating supply is e-liquid, meaning it's not being moved around. It's not being for sale. It's just sitting there in uh, cold wallets or other people's wallets or, or treasuries where companies are like, we're not selling. We're not selling for at least a decade, maybe 100 years. And you've only got 4.2 million Bitcoin in constant circulation. And I think even more so, uh, you have to understand that we've also lost some Bitcoin, so that plays into, into this illiquidity. Illiquidity, that's a good word. So here's what research from Glassnode found. This blue here is all the illiquidity, all the Bitcoin that just pretty much hovering around is not moving whatsoever. And then you have this um, yellow part, or I guess orange, excuse me, I, I'm colorblind, uh, that it's pretty liquid. And then this one, of course, down here, the red is highly liquid. That's the one that all the traders are pretty much, you know, gunning for. And they're just moving it around and whatever else. I'm not a trader. This isn't a trader channel. Uh, there's a lot of channels out there that do a bunch of trading, uh, which is great. You can check them out. But uh, I'm just an investor. I just don't have time or patience to uh, trade and to make these little micro transactions. I've got a lot of other stuff going on. So I just, I just buy and I hold, I invest. And when I need something for something else, then maybe I'll sell. But it's a rarity, honestly. And I'm one of those people who is just illiquid. It comes into my wallet and it is the black hole. It just... <laughs> Never, never leaves. Uh, I just sold a little bit uh, recently because I need to finance a housing purchase for a investment property, which I'm going to put on Airbnb. Just another one that we do, and uh, I'll be I'll be cataloging that in uh, subsequent videos so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but I sold a little bit. I took out a loan for the, the rest of it, the loan against my cryptocurrency on Celsius. And I got a video about uh, how I'm doing that. But uh, right now, it's just not really moving. It's not moving. There's not really much to, to move because people are holding on to it. All that really means is that Bitcoin is being hoarded, which reduces sell pressure. That's really all it is. It makes sense though, right? If you're holding on to Bitcoin and people are like, I really want that, I really want that. Well, sorry. Okay, well, I'll pay more for it. <laughs> well, maybe. So this is from BitUniverse, and it goes to show you how much Bitcoin that each uh, exchange actually has. And it's it's interesting interesting to note that Coinbase is at 870,000, which seems like a lot. But you have to understand, just a month or two ago, it was almost at a million. Uh, Huobi at 252, it was over 300K. Binance at 215, it was over 350K. So every single exchange right now is diminishing the amount of Bitcoin that it actually has because people like you and me are buying. They're putting in our wallets. And then there's also people like Michael Saylor over at MicroStrategy and other entities which are buying the cryptocurrency and they're locking it up in their treasury and they're not moving it whatsoever. And I can sum up this whole article in pretty much five seconds. Michael Saylor is not going to sell. Michael Strategy is going to hold on to Bitcoin for at least a decade. That's all I got to know. All that stuff that I just said is all in this article. So let's look at numbers because numbers don't lie and they're the easiest thing to take a look at. So MicroStrategy now and through Michael Saylor, uh, they have over or they bought over a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin and now it's worth two billion. So in four months, they are looking like geniuses because they doubled their, their money. I mean, can you imagine an outside company looking in going, wow, we have all this cash we're sitting on and it's just being debased because that Federal Reserve keeps printing out more money. These guys over here have a pretty good idea. They take all that money, they put into an asset that is deflationary, that cannot be printed, that really solves a lot of our problems and it actually goes up in value. <laughs> Well, we should do that. Same thing that Galaxy, Square, Hut, Voyager, Riot, I mean, all these different publicly traded companies, they all do the same thing. Do you see anybody in the red? No, they've all made money and they all look like geniuses. You know what makes it looks like a real genius is Coin Citadel. I don't even know who they are, but they bought 184,000 
and it's now worth 15 million. That's amazing. Then you have the private companies. Ooh, look, Mount Gox. Pfft, ah, what a catastrophe that was. And then, of course, we come down here and like ETF likes. Uh, you got Grayscale, which is buying up everything. Uh, they've got, man, they got 570. See, this is wrong. This is an old one. It says 572,000. They're close to a million. Um, they've got a lot of Bitcoin. And then one of the companies that's not on here is PayPal. And PayPal is gobbling up an enormous amount of Bitcoin. So if we took all this together, right now it says 1.1 million Bitcoin, but it could be as high as 1.5, especially with uh, PayPal in the mix. So when you have all these companies who are buying, 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 and then people are like, ah, I need to buy this. Well, sorry, we're not selling it because this is what we do. So all this stuff here, all these different things that we just went over as far as this, this Bitcoin price gap and the CME, I, it's just irrelevant to me. It's, it's irrelevant. It's just a little blip in the road. And really what it is, the signals to us is that, Hey, we just got a flash discount and we can buy some more Bitcoin. So again, fundamentals don't change. Uh, Bitcoin, there's not, there's nothing that has uh, radically been altered. It's the same type of thing. It's just that right now you get in a flash sale. Um, you're looking at uh, Nike shoes, 10% off. Uh, Bitcoin's almost 10% off. And <laughs> that's really what it comes down to. So that's it. And when, like we talked about, this 4.2 million Bitcoin in, in circulation is going to get taken off the market slowly but surely. All those different big companies are working with other entities like MicroStrategy is working with Coinbase. And they're doing microtransactions to uh, filter up or you know, snatch up all the Bitcoin. So whatever me and you sell, they're slowly snatching it up and just hoarding it. So uh, my, my recommendation to myself, because I can't give you any advice, is to never sell. Or at least not sell for quite some time and take out loans if you need it against the, the, the collateralized cryptocurrency and use those for other types of uh, industries. For me, it is for uh, products for Amazon, for my Amazon business, and it's also for investment properties. And those are the two things that I'm focusing on right now. All right. So that is it for today. Also, before I take off, just want to give a quick reminder that uh, I'm looking, still looking for Ryan Alchemist. Uh, Ryan, you are the winner of the Voyager $100. So make sure you go to danteacherscrypto.com, click on the contact tab and send me an email with your information so we can get you all set up. Also, Crypto T, you are the winner of the Trade the Chain membership. Mark Vazo, I've already contacted you via email. I'll send you out an email again today. Make sure that you pick that up. And then Daniel Verastegui, man, I think I butchered that. Don't forget that you are also the winner of the one year market rebellion trading platform and education platform winner. So uh, please reach out again at danteachescrypto.com. And lastly, Megabytes Mining Bar, you also won the Shield Folio. All right, so uh, that is it for today. Thanks for watching all the way in. If you like these types of videos, two more is gonna pop up on your left and right, not for sure. YouTube does its magic and that is all. So thanks so much and I'll see you on the next one.